All right, Legends, let's get into the remainder of the selections from 550 downwards. We obviously finished with AJ at 548 for our, for our last one there in, the, in our previous video. And obviously, we're going to go through a bunch of those centers, wing fullbacks now, and then all the cash cows that we're looking at into this week. And in terms of guys in our team and the people squad that you might look to target, there's probably not too many. Obviously, didn't speak about Moses in that last video, as I forgot to with him being in, in our side. But he's obviously a really good buy. Obviously, Trebojevic, in terms of his scoring, is going to be a perfect buy at 6.63. Just got to worry about, obviously, his injury history and origin coming up. So I know I'm personally one of uh, not too many in the top 1,000 to 5,000 that are that don't own him, so it's a bit of a pain. But, yeah, that's about all, guys. Him, uh, Moses and Tohu, with Cleary, obviously, your big ones. Um, Peachy, as well, as, as that one at 611K, is a great player for the centers. But let's go moving on to the rest of the guys. And let's look at someone like... Uh, Chewy Kamakamika, who's playing in the in the second row this week, and might do for the next couple. I'm not exactly sure. Obviously, uh, Smithy comes back, and he's a middle. He's a middle, so yeah, we'll see if that um if that does too much. But he hasn't really played on the second row, I don't believe ever. So something to think about there as to yeah you know, how he's going to be used. Will he will he get plenty of running? Will he get you know closer to 90 meters gained? Will he be able to be more chance of scoring a try on the edge, like a Felice Cafusi kind of style? Obviously, that left edge he's going to play on is is pretty strong, so that's something to think about with with Chewy. But I think at 544k, he's probably a little bit too overpriced for me, just for the fact that he's not going to become a keeper. I don't believe, but we're not going to see him hit 700k and be a keeper going forward because he's eventually going to end up back on the bench. So that's that's my thoughts with Chewy. Um, Horsburgh. He just needs more minutes at the moment for me to consider him. Elliot, I think, is definitely a sell if you still own him. Doesn't play 13 and not scoring very well. Uh, Cody, I think you could probably if you if you've got still got him at this point at 542k, he's a he's a hold, I think, but other than that, I wouldn't be targeting him. Then Rob's gonna go but through a bunch of guys that aren't too exciting. Colin Matangi, I think, shouldn't be brought in. I know people did last week and you just hope he starts scoring better again, but I'm expecting more 30s or 40s and 60s, let's say that. Um, and he's not a keeper, so again, that really weird price where they have to try and hit 50s for a certain period of time to, to make a lot of cash before they end up going back to what their normal scores are. So uh, that's the thought on him. Mitch Kenny's, Mitch, Kenny's, Mitch Kenny's obviously out now, so I think he's a he's a sell if you haven't done that yet. Uh, Fitzgibbon's in there as well at 537. And I just think for me, you've got to... Just let him let him go for a few weeks and see what happens with his minutes and, and what type of role he's going to play and how he's scoring before you decide to possibly pick him up in round 13. Um, not for Luma, someone that, I, again, I'd just be holding off on for a little bit. If you think about picking him up, maybe then right on round 13 would be good. But at this stage, probably a no. Uh, Renew for Tony, people are talking about. Yeah, he's, gonna, he's scored all right the last three games, but can he keep that up? And is he going to be a keeper? No, so he might keep him up for a few weeks, but I don't think he's going to be a keeper. Uh, Tupanua, I wouldn't be bringing in this week. I'd definitely be holding if you if you have him at this stage. He's going to score well at 524k and, and be good for your squad, um, but doesn't play 13, so it's a bit of a pain for anyone. Hopacek at 524k. I think he's pretty close to a keeper in the centers. You know, I think he's going to average around 40 for the year. Very, very consistent player and hopefully gets a few more tries for those that own him like myself. Uh, so you can possibly bring him in as a, a trading target for Momorowski if you need it. But obviously, there's guys like you know Peachy Bradman Best hasn't done as well, but he's he's partly an option as well. Um, you know, Rapan is out this week, so there's not a hell of a lot of great center options apart from like Bird, Peachy, Opechek. Um, Matt Burton we'll speak about in a sec, which is an interesting one as well. Um, Car I don't think is a trade in. Just doesn't it just needs to play. I think for me, he needs to play at least 60 minutes or you know closer to 80 in that role for him to average 50 plus and, and be worth a trade in because remember what an average of 50 is guys just an average of 50 is just under 700k so if he averages that for the next you know five six seven weeks then he'll be 700k and I don't think he'll do that so um, and that would be worth a trade in I'd imagine for someone who's playing 13 you can move him on closer to 17 but yeah I'm not sure if that's worth it um, Bradman Best I think you can let him go for another couple of weeks before picking him up because you might get him in the 400s and that would be a very very good buy especially if the Knights start to play a little bit better, like last week, for example. Um, moving along, Harris Tavita I wouldn't look at. And really, guys, coming into coming into these uh, this first buy, with with it being you know, three games left before it, I think the majority of your trades need to be players that are playing in that 13. 
unless it's a extenuating cir circumstance like you finally have a chance to get Cleary in or Chaboyevich or something like that where they're on absolute tear and, and the best in their position. Other than that, I think you've got to pick up people that are going to be playing in 13. And, and that's where, you know, Paulo comes into it as, as a factor, but you know, there's a chance he plays Origin too. I'd be waiting at least till 13 before deciding with, with someone like him, as he was a keeper in the past and, and could get back to those scores, but I'd be slightly worried. Um, if we look at someone like Matty Burton, so he's obviously got, he's kept the spot now, which makes it interesting. He's at 514k, it would have been nice if he, if he dropped down a little bit, but that's not to be. It's nice and slow loading. Um, yeah, Burton averaging 45.3 as a half and a, and a center combo. Really cool option leading into round 13 is, you know, when he moves over to uh, the halfback position, you can see what happened in round three here. He got 73 with no attacking stats, right? Pretty crazy. If you look at when he played, you know, he played 5 8 uh, over two games in a row last year, he got 69 and 86. So he's absolutely incredible when he gets that opportunity to to play, whether it's in kick meters, whether it's in try score, try assist, whatever it is, he's he's really, really good. Obviously, he's a uh, game in 2019, he got 29, which wasn't special, but yeah, he's obviously improved as a player since then. And when he gets that big minute roll, and he's going to get that in round 13 with either Cleary definitely out and Luai possibly out as well, where where Burton would, yeah, you know, he played with Luai last time and controlled the majority of the possession and and absolutely killed it. So you kind of get someone that's averaging, if you take out the 70, he's averaging close to 40 for the year in the centers, which is really, really cool with the 61, 37, 39, 42, 25, and 40. So pretty solid. Obviously, you know, he's got five tries in that, which is which is fair enough. Someone who's really low ownership percentage in the top thousand at 1.7. Obviously, no one in the top 100 has him at this stage, which is you know, probably smart. Um, but now that he's got that role for himself, because everyone was worried about Momorowski, now that Burton's got that role, he should be able to play you know, well enough in the centers, average close to 40 over the next bunch of weeks, which we'll take from a center. And then you get him for a big you know, 60 plus approximately, you know, anything could happen, but that's kind of what you'd be thinking, a 60 approximately in that round 13, and, and then maybe goes back to the centers. And if there happens to be an injury to, to a Luai or a Cleary, then then his stocks go through the roof, right? So you got so that's something you got to think about as well. If he's he's just such a good player that these kind of guys end up, you know, last year was a bit different. He he's, you know, he got a bunch of games. What did he play? Three, well, officially five. He played last year. He's already played more than that this year, and he's improving as a player. So these kind of guys tend to find their find their way into the team, which you've seen here, and even out doing guys like Momorowski, who would be a starter in the centers in in the majority of other teams. So. I think Burton's a very solid option. It would be nice to get him in the 400s, but 515, 514, sorry. Um, something you might just have to do and have to cop um, as a good center option with a few of the guys out this week. So keep him in your mind coming into this week. And if his price suits you, then, then that could be good there. Um, moving along, if I'm scrolling past anyone, guys, that means I don't think they're a good option. Ferguson's a hold. I wouldn't be bringing him in. Olam's an interesting one at 495K. He's actually cheaper than, than someone like Opacek or or Bird, all these, whoops, all these guys that we're actually talking about, and has been scoring well. He's obviously had a, a really good start, a couple of big scores, and then he, oh God, that's so slow, um, a couple of big scores, and then had a little bit of a, a soft patch of, of scores before improving into a couple of good scores recently, which we'll see here. So the 24-36 slowed him down a little bit in terms of his, um, his price rises to then go back to a 46 and a 52 without any tries too. So for someone who's average in centers, who's averaging 42 with only four tries, is actually really solid. And you look at his meters gain, he's averaging around 100 for the year. Doesn't tackle too much, but you see the, the tackle breaks and offloads that he picks up, along with some try assists and, and, and line breaks there in the majority of games. He's someone that is very, very consistent. They two scores in the 20s, 21, 24, but the majority of them are 30, 30, mid 30s to 40 to 50, right? So he's someone that's also a solid option, owned by 11.7%, which is actually pretty crazy. I didn't think it'd be that much. 2% uh, in the top thousand. So yeah, is what it is with with that. But again, another pod that you could possibly pick up in your squad if you were uh, if you're tempted or needed someone at 495k. Uh, let's go for Crichton as well. Yeah, he played play decent again. So he's got a he's had a couple of better games right now, which is good. And at 492k, I'm just still worried that I don't think he is a keeper in the long term. As I said, he scored so many tries last year. Look at that. And he was still, you know, still averaged just under 40 for the year with so many tries. And, and that's kind of how he's been doing it this year. Obviously, he's got two really good scores now 
in this in that right center role. But those last three games, he scored tries too. So he's, he's got a try in there with 33. Obviously, last week, a try, two tries. He's just had a perfect game. And then the one uh, in round seven, 53 with a try as well with some good meters gain. So I still think you can probably wait another week or two with him. But if you need someone right now, he's obviously fairly consistent. Should be out. Should be, yeah, still got 38 average for the year. I still think he, he should be average. Should be able to average close to that 40 mark. 10% um, of teams own him in the top 1,000, so you can, you got that to think about. But, yeah, that's yeah, probably all i got to say about him. He's not a clear buy or anything like that, like I think someone like Bird is. But, obviously, the center and wing fullback is is a nice combination for Steven there. Oh, thanks for the internet. It's killing me today. All right. What's we got? Birdie boy. All right. 39.4 average. Take out that 13 at the start of the year, which is his first game back in a couple of years. He's been really, really beautiful to watch and scoring nicely. 29 as his, as his low. Uh, it was funny he was against the Tigers, whereas he scored pretty well against every other team. So I think he's a really solid player. I think he should be averaging mid-40s this year um, and no percentage ownership. But 14% overall, he's owned by, uh, I think is a great option. I'd pick him over Crichton, for example. Uh, so you got Manu's in there, but he's not playing 13. Remus Smith playing 13, but I think it's too expensive now. Starling should lose his starting spot next week, is my call. Or maybe even this week they might switch him. So I wouldn't be I wouldn't be touching him, even though he's a great player. Uh, who else are we going to talk about? Keep scrolling down. Liam Martin gets the edge spot now. I think you can I think you can hold off on, on picking him up with Kate Ball coming back into the side next week. Fanukin's getting low, so I think he's going to be an interesting one coming into the origin period. If we can get him down to a little bit, you know, a little bit lower than what he is now, or holding steady, then he might have 150k to make. I just don't think he's a keeper. Alvaro, I think he should hold with all the issues right now. Lodge, yeah, I've been speaking about him. Okay, average option, slightly better option than than maybe Flegler. Josh Curran is great, just the issue that he doesn't play 13. He's already 450k, but he's going to score well on your side if you if you pick him up. All right, Tommy Gilbert still in the uh, in the reserves. Brian Kelly getting cheaper by the day. I just don't know if he moves into top tier center status. So I think there's the other guys you can buy a little bit more expensive are going to be a little bit better. Uh, Hampton to sell. It's just yeah, this is an easy way to go through all the players, guys, and just and check out check out where they're at and the kind of kind of guys you need. Aikens doesn't play 13. He's already up near 400k. I think you know I don't see him averaging any higher than this. I reckon that's That'd be his peak average, so I wouldn't pick him up. Tex Hoy not getting any games at the moment. Nico Hines is, a, a, again, a very interesting one. There's a good chance that Paps comes back. I just said apparently he's going to pass the final fitness test, which is which is good. Um, so Hines, where does he go? Does he go to 14 or does he go to 6? Because if he goes to 6, I think he's a pick up. If he goes to 6, you get him for two weeks of 6, and then at fullback in origin week. And... Then you work it out from there. If that's you know, if he gets three games over the next four, he makes a bit over 100k and scores well for your team. So he's a very interesting one. Will he be able to keep that, keep any of those spots going forward? Will Munster get rested in 14? You know, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. These are all things that that they can think about and Bellamy can decide with because they have those types of players like Heinz that can come in and cover. So he's he's an interesting one that you should think about. Uh, who else we got? Kotrick got his low now. 350k. He he burned a few people at the start. He, he looked great, and I was tempted to pick him up too. Looked great for the first few weeks, and then just just didn't go very well. Played a little bit at 330. Got a nice try last week, and then just went nowhere. So I think it's probably worth just staying clear. <coughs> All right. Who else we got? Jesse Arthur, as we mentioned, that yeah might make a little bit of cash, but I don't see him averaging 40, somewhere in the 30s. But is that enough? I don't think so. Staines would be an interesting one if he actually steps up his game come round 13. He could be, he'd be, uh, he could be priced around that, like, where he is now still, which would be interesting. Tyson Gamble's the interesting one at 310. I'll give this load one more chance. At 310, he has been scoring really well. The question is just, does he keep his spot? You know, do we think he does? I'm not exactly sure. But two games in a row, 43-44, with one try assist in both games, plenty of tackles, decent amount of kick meters and run meters in both. So if he can keep that up, he's going to make plenty of cash for you at, what, 310K. So again, if you need some half cover this week, most of us do have plenty of halves, and that's kind of the issue of bringing in a, another cash cow that's in the half position. But 
if he can keep around that 40 average, he's going to make 150k for you and score for you in round 13, and, and then you can move him on from there. So if you're looking for a cash cow, I think he's a very solid option. Moses Zembai, let's just hope that this experiment doesn't last and Dewey gets back to, to his rightful spot. That's that's all I'm going to say on Mbai. But, you know, dual position center wing fullback, he's going to score better than 24 average in that position. Uh, Riley Jacks comes in, will only be for a few weeks if he even plays. A few people have asked me about safe ass, but... A 293, yes, he's averaging okay at 31, but how long does he stay in the side? Stefano could take his spot. You know, a million different things could happen with that one, so I think it's just too risky to bring in someone like that. Um, Reese Kennedy's not doing much. Max Fagai, a couple of decent games now. You could pick him up, but does he keep his spot when Pereira comes back? Probably not. Um, Burns, 265. Tommy Talao, he's almost at that, at that bottom price that we're talking about coming around 13, so keep an eye on him. Uh, what else we got? Brady Jones. I kind of, I kind of nowhere now with the types of guys left. It's only really Sean Bloor, 246, but again, did score well in a game he played last year. But from all reports, he hasn't. He's only been playing okay in the in his return into New South Wales Cup, scoring at a PPM of or like 0. 0.6. So he's going to need more minutes than like 30 to 40 to do well. And and you look at his PPM last year, and there was a couple of decent games in like you know round 13 there, 22 in the 22 minutes. Uh, and then 20 and 11 minutes, but the rest of them were, you know, he's ended up at a PPM of 0.8. So if he can do that with 30 minutes, then he's a 25 point scorer. If he can do it with 40 minutes, he's just either 30, what, 32 point scorer. So nothing too exciting. He's already owned by 4% of people, 6% are even the top 100, which is really crazy. I would not have expected that at all, but yeah, that's where that's where it's at at the moment with, with Bloor. And I think you can just wait a few weeks. If you do we think he's going to stick in the team is also the question because you could trade him in now and be like, yep, we'll get him for round 13, even if he's like a 30-point scorer and then he doesn't get picked and it's like, uh, you know, Stefano comes back or whatever it is and it's a bit of a pain in the ass. So I think he can wait. If he plays really well, then he's obviously going to keep his spot. If he does, like, and he's not going to make too much cash in that first week unless he gets a 60, which he won't off the bench. Um, yeah, I think you just wait another week with Shawnee. So there you go, guys. That's the, uh, that's the chat from 550 down. I hope that helps you with your trades this week. You know, a lot of people might be going trading one of the big guns like Fafita and going to a top gun and then uh, leaving some cash in the bank by going uh, so like a Stefano down to a Bloor or I imagine a lot of those things would, would be happening. And just listen to what I've said, guys. If I've said they're a trade out then a, and there's guys I said are trade ins and you're picking those up, try not to ask me um, if you think they're a good trade because if I've said they're a, tr a, possible, a possible trade out and then of you've, you've brought one in that's a possible trade-in that I reckon, then just go with your gut and, and, and know that it's going to be okay. So um, that's the chat for the for these ones, guys. I hope that helped. And if you're liking these, please hit like and subscribe. I appreciate it. And we'll catch you in the next one, guys. We talk about our teams. See you guys.